ITS Trieste is the Italian Navy's new amphibious flagship and a deliberate blend of assault ship and light carrier design, commissioned on December 7, 2024 to replace the retired Giuseppe Garibaldi. On delivery, it was assigned as the core of the Amphibious Task Group, ATG, and, after an initial period in La Spezia, is to be homeport in Taranto. That dual role, amphibious hub day-to-day, -day, alternate carrier when required, anchors Italy's expeditionary posture and gives planners a sovereign, sea-based option for power projection, crisis response, and humanitarian assistance. At first sight Trieste's size and deck plan stand out. The ship is about 245 meters long with a full-length flight deck laid out in a two-island configuration, a forward island for navigation and a separate aft island dedicated to flight operations. The flight deck spans roughly 230 by 36 meters and features nine operating spots for helicopters and Stavel aircraft, capped by a 12-degree ski jump at the bow to support fighter operations when needed. Two 40-ton side elevators link the deck to a tall, flexible hangar designed to swing between aviation maintenance-slash-storage and overflow vehicle capacity depending on mission. Beneath the deck, the naval architecture is tuned to amphibious logistics at scale. The stern houses a floodable well deck measuring about 50 by 15 by 10 meters, large enough to embark up to four new LC-23 mechanized landing craft or, alternatively, a single allied LCAC for over-the-horizon assault profiles. Forward of the well deck sits a 900 square meters heavy vehicle garage with roughly 250 linear meters for tanks and armored vehicles, served by side ramps and a pair of 30-ton cranes to move loads to shore. In aggregate, Trieste's garages and hangar provide around 1,200 linear meters of vehicle capacity, and the organic boat package includes two fast FFC-15 multi-role combat boats plus ribs for tactical flexibility. As an aviation ship, Trieste is built to fly helicopters all day and to keep open the option of fixed-wing jets. Initial ship helicopter operating limits have focused on Italian Navy EH-101 and NH-90 variants, with interoperability expanding to Army and Air Force platforms. The ship can, in an air-heavy configuration, host an embarked Stavel component sized up to about 20 F-35 BS alongside SAR-slash-transport helicopters, and it was designed from the outset with a thermal metal spray treatment for the deck, acoustic protections, and reserved areas for secure mission data facilities. Crucially, the roadmap to full fighter operations includes installing the Joint Precision Approach Landing System, JPALS, and slash SPN 41B, and the Aircraft Inertial Alignment System. These works are planned to align with the warranty period starting in the third quarter of 2025, with Joint Program Office certification targeted via a Ready for Operations campaign that could begin from 2027. The hangar itself is as much a logistics bay as an aircraft barn. Measuring about 107.8 meters in length and 25 to 21 meters in beam with 7.8 to 10.7 meters in height, it offers roughly 2,200 square meters of floor area and can be subdivided for parking, maintenance, and cargo movement with overhead cranes. That volume gives planners the ability to reconfigure between an aviation-centric sortie pattern and a vehicle-heavy amphibious load and an internal ramp system ties the hangar into the lower garages for rapid respotting of vehicles and stores. Propulsion follows a fuel and mission-efficient hybrid logic. Trieste uses a Cottagall arrangement, combined diesel or gas or electric, coupling two Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines for sprint, two-man 20V32-44 CR diesels for cruising, and reversible electric motors for low-noise maneuvering all driving controllable pitch propellers. The electrical plant is built around four 5.4 MW MAN 9L32-44 CR gensets. In service terms the numbers matter, up to about 25 knots on turbines, 18 knots on diesels, and 10 knots on electric motors, with an endurance of roughly 7,000 nautical miles at 16 knots and logistic autonomy around 30 days. Fixed stabilizing fins help keep flight ops steady in higher sea states, and bow-slash-stern thrusters improve handling in confined waters. Beyond lift and movement, 
Triest's medical complex turns it into a relief mothership when disaster strikes. The NATO Roll 2E facility is about 770 square meters, centered on two operating theaters, pre- and post-op spaces, intensive care, isolation rooms with negative pressure, radiology, lab, dental, and associated services. This is paired with the ship's ability to deliver potable water, on the order of 70 cubic meters per day, and roughly 2,500 kVA of electrical power ashore, which together allow sustained humanitarian operations even where port infrastructure is degraded or absent. C4ISR defines Triest's value as a flagship. The Combat Management Corps is Leonardo Sadek MK4, a contemporary CMS with about 20 large, touchscreen operator consoles and remotely located processing nodes. Around it, the ship carries a sizable modular command and control area of roughly 430 square meters on the same deck as the 220 square meter CIC, plus dedicated spaces for air planning, traffic control, and unmanned systems command. Communication stitched together software-defined radios, multi-link processors for link November 16, 22 plus VMF and JREAP, and both military and commercial SATCOMs under a cyber-defended backbone, capabilities sized for joint and multinational operations. The sensor suite is modern and layered. At its heart is the new Starfire X-Band AESA radar with four fixed faces for persistent, 360-degree coverage, paired with the L-Band Kronos Power Shield Early Warning Radar, a rotating AESA with digital beamforming tuned for long-range surveillance, including against ballistic missile-like profiles. Precision approach and navigation are handled by the SPN-720 radar, Thales Italia Takin, and visual landing aids, FF is provided by Leonardo's SIRMPA with conformal antennas, and a distributed DDS IRST adds passive detection around the horizon. Together, these sensors give Triest a wide area picture and the fine control required for safe, efficient deck cycles in crowded littorals. Electronic warfare is integrated as a system of systems. An ELT group suite under an EW manager orchestrates radar and communications ESM with active jamming, RECM, for soft kill defense, and two ODLS-20 launchers provide multi-mode decoys against air and underwater threats. The ship also mounts a distributed electro-optical package and a non-lethal stabilization-slash-surveillance system on the islands and sponsons, adding both day-slash-night identification and graduated response tools in congested waters. For hard-kill self-defense, Triest mounts three 76-62mm super-rapid guns in Strail's configuration firing dart-guided ammunition, controlled by three NA-30SMK-2 radar-slash-EO directors, plus three remotely operated 25-80mm mounts to counter small surface craft and close-in threats. Importantly, the design is, fitted for but not with, an MBDASAM extended self-defense installation, two vertical launcher positions on the starboard side to accept Aster 1530ths, allowing Italy to add area defense missiles in a future increment without major structural surgery. That forward-looking design margin shows up elsewhere too in reserve topside weight, power, and cooling for new sensors and effectors. All of this supports a clear operational concept. Trieste sits at the center of Italy's national projection from the sea, CNPM, construct alongside other amphibious assets, works in combined formations through the Spanish-Italian Amphibious Force and the European Amphibious Initiative, and pairs with the Cavour-led Carrier Strike Group to form an expeditionary task force. In normal cycles the carrier concentrates on high-end air missions while Triest acts as amphibious hub and command node, when the carrier is unavailable, Triest can embark a limited Stavel air group as an alternate aviation platform, preserving a measure of deterrence and air policing close to home waters. There are, inevitably, trade-offs to manage. Until vertical launchers and missiles are actually fitted, long-range air defense rests on escorts, soft-kill measures, and the agility of the 76mm Strails guns, that is acceptable for a task group flagship but constrains independent operations in high-threat air-slash-missile environments. The F-35B path, while clearly mapped, 
is multi-year by design, installing balls and associated gear, validating secure mission data workflows, and choreographing fifth-generation deck ops all take time and compete with routine amphibious training. None of this diminishes near-term utility, the ship earns its keep through helicopter lift, logistics depth, and command presence, but it is a realistic view of how fast, carrier-like, capability will arrive. In comparative terms, Trieste aligns most closely with Spain's Juan Carlos I and its derivatives, ships that fuse amphibious roles with stavel options on a ski jump deck, while offering a more explicit growth path in sensors, C4I and medical capacity. Compared with the French Mistral class, the Italian ship brings a stronger aviation bias and an easier runway to fixed wing ops, while matching or exceeding them in hospital fit and vehicle handling. It is, of course, much smaller than the UK's Queen Elizabeth class and not intended to mass air power in the same way, instead, it emphasizes breadth of mission, amphibious muscle, command and control, humanitarian reach, and a credible if limited fixed wing option. That versatility is precisely what a European middle power needs across the Mediterranean and adjacent theatres. Taken together, the numbers and the architecture tell a coherent story. A 230x36M deck with nine spots, a hangar sized for both jets and heavy lift helicopters, a 50x15x10M well deck, and vehicle lanes totaling roughly 1,200 linear meters underpin real amphibious throughput. A Cadigal plant with MT-30 sprint power and diesel-electric economy supports long on-station periods and quiet maneuvering. Modern AESA radars, a robust CMS, and a Roll 2E hospital elevate the ship from Big Taxi to Expeditionary Command Node and Relief Platform. And the fitted-for-but-not-with approach, reserved spaces for VLS, provision fighter support systems, growth margins in power and cooling, buys the Navy options to insert new capabilities as budgets and threats evolve. For Italy, ITS Trieste is not just the largest post-war ship built by the national industry, it is a flexible tool for the uncertain demands of the 2020s and 2030s, from deterrence and evacuation to disaster relief and alliance operations, with a credible pathway to fifth-generation air operations at sea.